let's move it forward. Uh, thanks for participating in this. Maybe at the end of this call, we'll set up some more uh, accountability for this next week. Um, one of the things that I wanted to, to talk about today, uh, and then we can get into like some Q&A, is I wanted to talk about something called a clarity break. Does anybody know what a clarity break is? So a, a clarity break is basically when you take some time, uh, you set a time with yourself to really just do a self check-in and kind of just evaluate how you're showing up in the different areas of your life, right? Like, yeah, this, this mastermind is about, you know, growing your business, but part of growing your business is also growing as a person and making sure that everything, you know, is working well. Uh, because if all the other things in your life are working well, you're going to show up better as a business person. So um, one of the strategies that one of my coaches, um, you know, taught me was to really set some time, you know, whether it's every month or every two weeks, where you just set an appointment with yourself for, you know, 30 minutes or an hour to really just, you know, go somewhere, time block, no distractions, just you and a pen and a pad or you and typing in, you know, you know, in your notes or something. And you're really just analyzing how you're showing up in certain areas of your life. Right. And we're talking about, you know, our spiritual life, our, you know, our physical life, you know, our family, how are we doing with money? How are we, how am I showing up in my business? Um, and really just the self analysis, right? So we can make those adjustments because what happens guys is as we start to get busier and we have more things on our plate, it's easy to just go through life, not really being aware of what's going on in all the different aspects, right? We're kind of just going through the motions. We're making stuff happen. We're go, 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 go. But are we taking the time to really sit back and say like, Hey, you know, I'm a dad, like, how am I showing up as a, as a dad? Like, how have I been showing up these last 30 days with my kids? You know, have I been doing like the most that I could or, you know, and, and so that I can analyze that and I can say, hey, I, I need to make this adjustment. You know, it's, it's about self-awareness. You know, maybe it's, you know, your, your physical health, right? Like, how am I doing in my physical health? Am I, you know, am I honoring my commitments to, you know, whether you want to eat healthy or whether you want to work out or whether whatever type of lifestyle you're choosing to live, like it's a self check-in with ourselves. So um, for the sake of this call, we don't really have time to kind of to go into everyone doing one, but I want just to point out guys that, you know, to be good business people, we have to feel good about everything that's going on in our life, right? Um, because if you just overlook things, right? And you don't really take the time to evaluate yourself the, the clock keeps moving, right? The days keep going by, time goes by. And, you know, you're gonna, we're gonna look back, you know, and, and sometimes if we may look back with regret, like, man, you know, I, I could have been better in this area of my life, or I could have done this, or I could have made this adjustment. Um, so it's, it's really something that, that I just wanna point out for you guys. It's something that I'm, I'm gonna, you know, commit to. I was doing it pretty often, but, you know, life happens and I kind of got thrown off the rail. So. Uh, I want to get back to that. And I want to encourage all of you guys to do that. Do you guys have any questions or any comments or any feedback on a clarity break? Or do you think this is important? Or are you doing anything like this currently? Hey, Rika, I'll share. Um, you know, what I normally do is I, I take actually throughout, throughout one time through the, through the day and I meditate. You know, I kind of just uh, close my door, shut everything off, turn everything down and just kind of do a quick meditation session just to clear my mind, clear my thoughts and uh, to be able to refocus and then continue to do what I do best. So, I mean, that's one of the, I think is a, is a very good thing. I mean, I work out every day, uh, sometimes twice a day, <laughs> but it's more for health wise because I'm old <laughs> and I need to stay young. But, um, but that's physical mental is something very important and uh you know i some of my family members have uh mental issues uh battle through anxiety and 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 such things and uh, these are some of the things that we were taught so hopefully that helps out anyone that's uh, thinking about doing that that's awesome man i do 
it's not meditating, but I, I, I take my car and I go on drives. That's what it is for me. Sometimes if I've had a really tough month or a tough day or a tough week, I'll cut my day short and drive out to the beach, watch the sunset, something that really just, for me, that's a big reset because it's just me, my car, and just really the road because there's nothing else. Um, one thing I, I did and I, I started doing it when I really, really, really got busy and I realized that there was no balance. I ended up getting two phones. So now I have a person on a work phone. And when I feel really overwhelmed, the work phone stays at home because then I can focus just on me or just on my girlfriend. And it really helps me reset. I think that's a big one for me was getting two phones and going on drives is what it does. Does it. That's awesome, man. Sometimes just, yeah, just that drive, right. You know, just your time to just kind of sit there and think and process your thoughts. I think it's, it's definitely healthy. I was, I was considering doing that too. Cause I have, I've had my phone number for so long. A lot of people have my phone number, clients, personal, but like, if we don't turn that thing off guys, like that thing just rings, it dings, there's messages. And especially when, you know, like in my position, I'm leading a team, like there's always something going on. You know, the busier you get, the more things on your plate, there's always something happening in your day. And um, if we let the business consume us, it will consume us, you know? So I like that you have, you know, two phones. I think that's a great strategy. Um, I know uh, a buddy of mine, Kevion, has two phones and he was saying when he pulls up to his house, he leaves both of his phones in his glove compartment. And he says, all right, when I go in, I'm gonna leave my phones there for at least the first hour or two when I get home. And then later on, I'll go grab my phones. And if I need to check something or handle something, I'll do that. But this way you can walk into the house, not attached to your phone, right? Because it becomes human nature, right? Like we're so used to having this phone in front of us, you, you become attached to it, right? And sometimes when you don't have your phone, I don't know, this is me, I, I'm like, dude, where's my phone? Like you start kind of getting this lightweight anxiety, like, man, like something's missing, right? Or like, I'm gonna miss a call or a deal or something, you know? So I think we gotta reprogram ourselves to, to you know, not have all these things just kind of eating at us at all times. Uh, so good feedback, brother. Anybody else have any feedback on this, this topic here? Sure, I do. So being, um, where's all your females at? <laughs> I feel, um, a little outnumbered. Um, so for me in the morning, I wake up as early as I can. It's not five o'clock in the morning. I'm just not a morning person. Um, but it's the hardest thing for me to get up and focus on spending 30 minutes on myself. And, um, I'm really, really big on meditation because naturally I'm a very negative person. A lot of people will not really, uh, notice that, but because I work on myself so much in the morning to set my day, it's super important to, meditate for me. I read my daily word because I'm a very spiritual person. I have, um, I always find a journal to work on. So like I have this eat, pray, hustle, which is just kind of, um, it's a daily journal and it just kind of focuses me on what I need to do because we're, we're always setting goals for ourselves in real estate. So it's really important for me to always have a goal because I'm goal driven. If I don't have a goal, it's kind of like I'm spinning my wheels and I'm not I eventually end up burning out because I'm like working, working, working. And whether it's just buying myself a new purse or I wanna you know, go on a small weekend vacation, I always have to set a goal for myself. If not, it, I just realize I burn, I burn out. Um, but the first 30 minutes of my morning, sometimes it's a little bit shorter, sometimes it's a little bit longer. It's just how I feel is so important for me when I don't do that my day becomes overwhelming because I didn't set, I didn't set myself up for a positive, healthy, um, goal-driven day. So for me, I, somebody said, uh, like somebody said, there's some sort of mental issue or I, sorry, if I didn't get that right in their family, for me, depression runs in my family a lot. So I had to start that off at a very young age. And that's kind of set me through my entire life was 30 minutes in the morning to just focus on me. And my whole day is like, perfect after that. Not perfect, but I can always revert back to, okay, this morning, my goal was this, or um, that Bible scripture said that, or my journal said to focus on being positive and to, you know, cancel up the noise, whatever it is. I just, even if, you know, it just helps me revert back to my 30 minutes in the morning that set me up for the day. So that's what I do. That's awesome. I love that. That's, that's great feedback. Thanks for sharing that, Anita. 
And I think the big thing, the big takeaway from that is that you're starting your day or you're living your life with intention, right? Instead of just living it by default. Um, And a lot of us do that, right? Like we just go about the day, like, all right, whatever happens, happens. Instead of like setting an intention in the day, even if it's something as simple as like today, focus on being more positive, right? Mm -hmm. But by you taking the time to just read that or write that down, that's now in the back of your mind and you can catch yourself if you're being negative or if you're, you know, you have a bad attitude, you're like, Hey, remember, remember what you said, right? Yeah. And another thing that I do with that, because, you know, I'm a, I always think about, I always think ahead. It's just naturally, I'm always planning for ahead. I'm always planning for the next listing appointment that I have tomorrow or something. And if I feel a little discouraged or I feel like um, I start to get those negative thoughts. um, I don't know if you've heard this before, but I start writing down 33 times. um, Well, I write it down pretty much a long list of what I like about that. So if I'm going to a listing appointment that I, um, that I know that, you know, I'm in competition with like five other agents, I literally write down in my book, you know, (laughs) I just listed, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that way I'm already mentally preparing myself. Hey, I'm going to kill this listing presentation. I'm already getting it. So mentally preparing myself in the morning for, you know, negative things or whatever's to come also helps a lot too. So hopefully that helps somebody. That's awesome. That's awesome. There's a lot of power in writing stuff down. Yep. No, um, I got a lot of good takeaways from all you guys. Uh, I, I, my, my process is I do wake up early in the morning. I do what Steve says. I go to the gym or I, or I work out in the morning. But I think a huge takeaway for me is just being intentional with with some of the practices that you guys are doing. So thank you guys for sharing, because, again, I feel even though I do wake up early, I do have, you know, I call that my time where I don't have to worry about my kids, my wife, my dog, my clients, my team. But I think I need to take it to the next level of just being intentional with some of the things that you guys are practicing um, because I do sometimes feel like I am just going through the motion at 5.30 or 6 o'clock in the morning, even though it's, I feel it's good for me, but I think just adding a few of the things, the meditation, the uh, you know, writing in the journal, I think those things are definitely things I can add to my morning, my daily process. So thank you guys. That's awesome. Uh, Eat, Pray, Hustle, that, that was the name of that journal there. Is that a book or a journal? Yeah, it's a journal. It's um, if you guys are in the spiritual realm, this is a really good eat, pray, hustle. It's just a journal that somebody got me and I actually bought it and gave it to a couple other people, but it's just, it's really about aligning your faith and your goals and then remembering, you know, to keep yourself grounded and humble, which is always a good thing, right? Um, but it just, you know, it's just one of those things for me, like I said, I always have to be working towards a goal and, you know, writing down your goals, your yearly goals, your quarterly goals. Yes, we all have them, but it's just kind of nice to focus on something in the morning You know, writing things down in the morning are really good. But when you have something like a journal that kind of, it asks you certain questions, like, what are you going to focus on today? You know, what was the positive things of yesterday? You know, that just, you know, how it is. These little journals are great to just kind of keep you on track. So anything's good though. This is like my probably like my 10th journal for the year. There we go. That's awesome, guys. Um, You know, and that's the thing is sometimes we know we should be doing certain things, but we don't know what to do, right? So sometimes having these little cues or these little journals that ask like thought provoking questions, like what are you going to focus on today? Or what was the most positive thing that happened yesterday? Like those are little cues that can, you know, uh, trigger you to, you know, to kind of explore that space. So, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to take, I'm going to borrow that. I'm going to add something to my routine. Cause for me, it's, it's the gym, but I think now adding in, even if it's just five minutes to write stuff down, like getting stuff on paper guys does wonders. A lot of times we carry things in our mind, right. And it makes you cloudy and stuff like that. But when you get to like throw that on a piece of paper, it's almost like a release, right. You get to get it out there and you start using, um, other parts of your brain as well right? Like if you're just thinking about something, you're using one part. If you're writing something, you're thinking of some, you're using another part. And if you're reading back what you wrote, you're using another part of your brain as well. So it just makes it that much more uh, impactful. Um, so good stuff. I like this. 
Um, let's switch gears a little bit, guys. Let's open up. You know, I, I wanted to kind of start off with that topic, but let's open up to more um, some tactical stuff, some strategy, some questions, some feedback. What is something right now in your business, an area of your business that you want to grow in, improve on, develop? That's one question. Or what's something that you notice is really working for you right now that you maybe could share with others, a helpful tip? And uh, let's go ahead and, and kind of tackle, you know, some of those things. So what's something you want to work on, something you need help on, you want to just, you know, pick our brains or what's something that's working for you um, really well that you may want to share with the rest of the group here. One thing that that's working for us right now that we're implementing because we're running a team is, um, is basically help having the, the, some of the senior agents start helping us with training. I think a lot of times they hear it from, from me, they hear it from maybe Enrique, but to see some of the senior agents step up and start training some of the newer agents is definitely, um, we're getting a lot of good positive feedback from, from, from that. And so, um, you know, now we've implement schedules of, of where we're rotating a certain training by a certain agent and again, that that's definitely something that's um, that's working for us, and I, I'm excited to see how that progresses in the in the future. Yeah, no. Um, to piggyback off that, you know, some of you guys may be on a team, some of you guys may be solo, some of you guys may be running a team. So, for us, uh, as our team grows, we want to put more leadership in place because you know the team as a team gets so big, there's only so much that we can handle as, as the leadership, right? So as people rise up in the ranks, you know, of our organization, we start um, adding leaders, right? That can kind of take over some of the training and they can have a different voice and they're the boots on the ground that are making things happen. Um, so that, that's kind of something that we've been focusing on. Now, let's say you're not running a team, right? You're not a, a team leader and that maybe doesn't relate to you and you're more of just a solo agent I think having some sort of consistent training in your schedule, um, you know, if you're on the receiving end is, is extremely important. You know, whether it's you're attending a mastermind like this every single week, or you're, you got some sort of, you know, group that you're a part of, you know, there's a lot of resources out there. There's Facebook groups, there's a lot of accountability groups, there's different trainings, maybe that your office may offer. Um, and I think it's important guys that we maintain that kind of student attitude that student mindset, right? There's, there's always something to, to be learned. Um, and even now, even at this point in my career, I, I'm still learning every single day. So, uh, you know, I think that's something that's really working well for us. What else do we got guys? What, what's something that's working for you? Something that you want to grow in a question you might have. So I have a question. So I, um, recently, um, started working with, so I have a team, it's a new team and I'm working with two part-time agents and one fully licensed agents. They're brand new. Um, and I'm pretty inspiring. They are pretty good at doing weekly meetings, but obviously they're new and I've been in business for a long time. So I know how to keep myself self-motivated. I know how to look for my next transaction um, and to keep, keep them feeding them with leads is fine right now, but I also want to encourage them to not just rely on me and myself. And obviously open houses are now open. So we're talking about that, but what's another way to direct them and encourage them to not be afraid to call their spear or to kind of push them out and, and let them know, Hey, you know, we're all in business for ourselves. I don't want them to just be so reliant on me. My first, um, one of my, the girls on my team, I happened to be on vacation and, you know, she was showing my listing and her first check was like huge. You made 20, 20 grand on her first check. And I'm like, they're all not going to be that way. They're all, they're all not going to be that easy. You know, I'm not always going to have a listing that you can open a door for and, and, and get your offer accepted, but I want them to be not just reliant on myself, but how do I inspire them to, you know, I, I gave them a challenge. I said, here's your farm you know, it's up to you to start farming. We sat down, I showed them what houses, I showed them how many houses they needed to farm in order to get X amount of results. And then both of them, the part-timers, they didn't reach, they didn't do their farm. They didn't go pass out the flyers. They, they're they they're stuck. And I'm like, okay, 
I'm not that way because I'm very self-motivating, but how do I inspire them to be that way? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, can anybody provide some advice or I, I got a couple of things I can add, but. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things and, and Anita, you're not the only one in that situation, right? I think a lot of us that are running your team or that have ran a team have that same question of, uh, I think a lot of us that are on here are already self-motivated. So how do we, how do we share that energy and how do we continue to uh, motivate others? And again, one, one thing that, that we've done and I know Enrique has, this is a great question for Enrique. He has a list of ideas that you can do. So I'll just kind of give you one thing that I know is huge for our team is setting up even healthy competition amongst these agents will, will go ahead and help them hold each other accountable and also help motivate them. You know, we have, we have a competition right now in our office where we basically set up a few teams, put a few agents underneath these teams and we check in with them weekly on the progress of, of that contest. And, and again, it's, it's a healthy competition, but I guarantee you all, all of them want to beat each other. They do not want to lose. And it's, and it, it's, and I got some of my guys on, on the, on this, on this call now, but again, I think that is one thing that to make it fun, right? We don't want to just you know, crack the whip and yell at them. It's more like, hey, how can we inspire? How can we make this fun and exciting and, and, a, and an enjoyable place to, to work and compete? So that's one thing is just putting certain contests in place. And it may be different levels to where your agents are at. It may just be a contest on who can set appointments. It may be a contest on how many listings you can meet, you know, versus, you know, actually signing deals. So you may just have to tailor the contest towards, their level of expertise, right? So ho hopefully that helps. I know Enrique got some good stuff as well. Cool. Yeah, the other thing, uh, uh, yeah, the contest definitely helps, you know, depending on how big your, you know, your team is. Um, but the other thing too, is that I think what we got to realize as team leaders is that there's, there's people that are the ones that have to do the motivating and there's people, the ones that need to receive the motivated, right? That need to get inspired and get motivated, right? Unfortunately, like if everybody was like you, they wouldn't be on your team, right? There's a reason why you somehow have become the team leader and you have people coming under you, right? So um, I think a lot of times what we're looking for is we're looking for someone to think like us, act like us and be like us. And unfortunately, that's just not the way the world works. Um, so I think we just have to know that going in, like this is, if you're gonna choose to take the route of being a team leader and lead other people, this is kind of what you're signing up for. All right. And sometimes you get into it and you're like, hey, I didn't, I didn't know I signed up for that. Or maybe that's not really what I wanted to sign up for. Um, so I think we just have to know that. Um, the other thing I can say, like at a basic level of a team, and this has really helped us, is you have to create the culture. You have to create the rules. You have to create the environment. You have to create the schedule and the structure. Um, because you can't it's especially when someone's new and they don't really know what it takes yet. We can't just rely on them to like, know like how much they have to work or how much they have to push. So for us, for our brand new agents, like they got to be in the office Monday through Thursday from nine to 6 PM at nine o'clock. We do a, a team huddle. We do role play. Uh, they're on the phones from a certain time. They go to lunch from a certain time. They're back on the phones or going to appointments from a certain time. It's very structured and very tailored. Um, so that they know exactly what to do. What do you do with your part-time agents? Do you have part-time agents? We have a couple part-time agents and for the part-time agents, it's a little more challenging because let's say they have another job or, um, they can only show up a certain day. There still has to be some accountability around the part-time agents. It might be less. It might be like, Hey, your job this week is to call a hundred people during the whole week versus your full-time agent, it might be more. And you're gonna have to check in with them on a weekly basis and hold them accountable to the, whatever goal they set. You know, So I think the goals and the measurables have to be really clear as well. Um, you, know, you have to come up with that. And it might, be, it might be different for each person depending on what they're trying to do. Like you may have an agent that wants to close five deals a month and an agent that's fine with closing one. You know, so, the activities they have to do are going to, are going to be different. 
Yeah. You know, yeah. so and and being in production, which I know you're in production and being a team leader, that's that's a difficult road. Um, because it's it's really messy and you're having to kind of you know differentiate your time from to focus on your own production and then your time to pour into the agents um, so that you're you're giving them as much support and value as possible. Um, mm -hmm. And like the good thing is that it's me and Jason, we have, I have a partner. So we're able to kind of divvy up some of the, the, the workload, but in the beginning, yeah. it's, it's, it's a little tough. Yeah. The, one, this one big thing, Go ahead. You know, one, one big thing Anita, that I would say is because it sounds like you're starting your team is, is definitely, definitely pick who's going to be on your team. Meaning, meaning make them go through it like a really, really good interview process. And that's something that Enrique and I years ago, it's like, okay, you want to be on our team? Great. You know, we looked at the, the, the more that they call it, the more the potential, like, you know, I'm going to make this person great. And, and what we've learned is we don't, we don't want to really look at their potential. We want to look at their pattern. What have they been successful at, right? You're 27, 28 years old. You've had to have something you've been successful at because if you haven't, I mean, I'm pretty good, but I don't know if I can make you become great if you haven't had any pattern of having some type of success. And I think as sales agents, business owners, you know, again, early on, we looked at, you know what, I can, I, you know, this person wants to be on my team, I'm going to make them great. You know, they have the potential. And then we spend a lot of time and we get frustrated, right? We're like, shoot, man, they're not showing up. They're not, I just paid X amount for these flyers and they didn't even take the energy to go drop them off. <laughs> right. And those are not the kind of conversations you want to have. You want to have the conversations of, hey, I want more flyers. Hey, I want more opportunity. Not the, not the conversation of why did you not drop these off that we just paid for. Right. Yeah. So definitely going through that process is, you know, hire. What do they say? Hire, hire, slow, fire fast. Right. And again, not that we want to fire people, but just kind of that concept of take your time on who you invite to be on your team to make sure it's a good fit. Yeah. yeah makes sense. Because the other thing you got to think about it too, it's an opportunity cost, right? Let's say you have a bad hire or someone that doesn't really have the qualities that you're looking for and you invest time and that takes away time when you could have been producing, you know, and then at, at the end of the day, they quit and now you just wasted all that time, right? So you actually took a step back. Hold on. So yeah. I think you got to be really, um, how do you say, really picky on who you bring on your team. What I would do is an exercise is write down the qualities that you're looking for in someone. And what are the rules? Like this person has to be this or that or this, you know, these are the things that they have to have naturally before I even give them an opportunity to, to work with me. Okay. So certain things. Got it. Cool. Thank you. No problem. Any other questions, guys? What else is going on in your business? What question do you have right now for your business? What's something that's working well? What's an area you want to grow in? I want to be better at getting referrals from my SOI and previous clients. I've been an agent now, um, well, we're in June, a year and a half now. So I've had a little over 25 closings. So I think I need to start getting to a point where I'm actually getting referrals. And I have the experience now to feel confident and, and comfortable talking to my SOI to make sure I get business from them as well. That's where I need to grow. I just don't know really how to do it. I can add a little bit into that. Um, how do you ask for the referral? Or are you asking for the referral? No, that's that's what I mean. There you go. So you just got to literally take that time and go through your whole Facebook friends, all your Instagram and send a little message. Hey, like, um, as you already know, I'm in real estate. Just check in to see if you have any questions. Done. Done. Okay. And you'll be surprised, man. And that's I mean, you just got to ask. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and if, if I'm going to chime in and on as well, um, and I know I joined a little bit late, but I, I'm part of Enrique and Jay's team and, and uh, alongside of Irvin. Is, and uh, um, for me, I get a lot of referrals just planting the seed from my Facebook, or sorry, my Instagram stories. So I'm always just saying, hey, if you guys need any help, send me referrals. Or if you know anyone, 
but not all the time. It's not every day, right? If I'm out there showing a home or if I have a tidbit to share of a story, um, then I'll just put it out there. And surprisingly, people will send me somebody or they'll say, hey, now I'm looking to buy or sell a house. Uh, it, for me, it's just that consistency and presence on social media. Um, and it's not always just posting because people are always scared to post. It's just my stories. So Yeah. And Mitch does a great job at that of documenting his journey. Um, if you guys don't follow Mitch, follow him. You'll see this guy's like, he's, he's giving you it all, right? He's giving you the wins, the highs, the lows, funny stuff. He's showing you beautiful homes. Every, he has a, he bought a bell. We had a bell in our office. When we book appointments, you, you ring the bell. You can see it right behind Herbin. Um, <laughs> he bought a bell and put it in his, in his house. I get hit it there. <laughs> and he broke it. <laughs> so anytime, if you follow the stories, you'll see anytime he gets a buyer in con, he has a win, a buyer in contract offer accepted, uh, a new listing sign. He's like shows it and then he rings the bell like in his office. I mean, in his at his house and like it's freaking hilarious. Right. It's like offer accepted. Ding, 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 ding. Right. Like so he's almost like he's he's making people have a good time when when they're watching him. You know, so it's a really good strategy, um, even though Mitch is on our, our team. Like, yeah, I, I talk to him all the time, but I, I watch his stories because they're they're entertaining. They're funny. Yeah. You know, so. <laughs> Well, and great thing I want to bring to is, is not always people will comment to me about real estate. So I'll share, Hey, I'm on a one wheel. I'm walking my dogs and my dogs are like a big, right? So people will talk to me about my dogs. I'll talk to them about their dogs. All of a sudden we're talking about real estate, right? Uh, so just sharing a lot about my life, regardless uh, of it being real estate has, uh, is definitely bring me referrals. So, um, definitely recommend using that social media. So let's, let's now dig a little deeper with that, right? Let's take it back to what Alfredo is, is saying. Alfredo has, you closed 25 closings, you said in the last year and a half or so. So you have 25, hopefully they were all, you know, good experiences, right? But let's just assume you have 25 people who now know, like, and trust you and have had a good experience with you. So what's a strategy that you can do to now tackle those is number one is you got to make sure all those contacts are in a certain place. So, um, and this is a question for you, Alfredo, are all of those people following you on Facebook? Are you connected with them on Facebook or Instagram? Yeah, a lot of them were actually friends on Facebook because I actually haven't had a bad experience with any single client. So that's that's a good part. I've had nothing but great transactions so far. Um, so yes, they all um, are either friends or follow me on Instagram. Um, one goal that I had for this week was to actually add them all to Homebot. I don't know if any of you are familiar. Yep. Um, home bought, and then of course I want to follow up with them. Um, I actually want to call them because a lot of like a lot of people are hitting almost a one year mark, and I mean values are crazy. So I want to call all of them, and kind of give them a rundown on their value, and see how they're doing. And then of course I'm going to be asking for some business. There you go. So that's step number one, right? Is auditing all your clients, and I would maybe put a spreadsheet together where you add your clients, or if you have a CRM or something where you can check off a box. Are they on my Instagram? Check. Are they on Facebook? Check. Like you want to hit them in different angles, right? Instagram and Facebook. Some people may be more on Facebook. Some people may be more on Instagram. They may be a LinkedIn type of person. Are they on my LinkedIn? If you mess with LinkedIn. Um, and then the other thing is, did I add them to Homebot? Check, right? And basically create the rules of how you're going to engage with these people. Um, okay. The other thing is I do email content. So I put, I put out two videos a month that goes to my database. That's a really, really effective strategy to keep you top of mind. And it's basically two videos a month. One of them's a market update. One of them is a tip for home buying or home selling. Simple videos, one to two minutes long. It goes to our whole entire database and they get those videos consistently. So you can use MailChimp, you can use Squarespace, whatever you choose to use. It doesn't have to be nothing super high level. It just has to be consistent. So part of my list would be like, are they on my email list? Check, right? And then once you have everyone in that, in that database and you have them all in those places, now all you got to do is just execute, right? So you got to make sure you're posting consistently on Facebook and Instagram. You got to make sure you're sending out your videos every single month. And just, just by doing that, like you're going to be top of mind with people. And then yeah. the, next, the next step after that is you set times in your schedule. 
maybe it's once a month and this week is, or once a quarter, maybe once a quarter, you could say this week, every single quarter is database week. So that whole week, I'm just calling my database, just saying what's up, checking in on them. Hey, it's okay. been a year since you bought the house. Hey, how's the family? How's the house? Do you need anything? Um, just want to make sure you're getting my emails, you know, and surprisingly, when you just check in on people, even if you don't ask for business, they bring it up, right? Because they know yeah. you're in real estate, right? So even if you don't ask, they're going to be like, yeah, you know what? My cousin is thinking of buying. And then you go from there, right? And you try to, you know, get the information or whatever. But it's just a simple strategy of just using the tools that you have to stay top of mind and then taking the time to do that personal touch where it's like, hey, it's, you know, even if it's a text message, hey, it's Alfredo, been thinking of you guys, you know, your six months are coming up since you bought the home. Let me know if you guys need anything, you know, and just make that a part of your routine and a part of what you do in your business and watch, you'll get, you'll get referrals. Okay. Any questions on that or anybody else want to add anything to, to that or anything you're doing to, to stay top of mind with your, your database? Yeah, I mean, just a little add on is going to be, I know Ricky was saying calling and the other part I would just say is just, you know, even if they don't answer the call, just sending them a text. Right. I think it's important because a lot of people, I mean, I know how many phone calls we get, but we do respond to text a lot quicker. So again, so even if you have like a CRM and that CRM is throwing out that email, I would say, you know what, if your CRM can also send a text message, go ahead and implement that. If not send a personal text, you know, a lot of times what I'm doing is I'm writing out a text and I'm just copying and pasting it and just adding my client's name to it. Uh, if I'm not using the CRM to, to, to do a mass text, but, yeah. um, but yeah, just, um, being consistent. I think Alfredo, a lot of people are in that situation because we are so busy working on current business or working what's in front of us that we need to take time on just, you know, every quarter calling it like Enrique said, database week, or, you know, and just may, or, or just reaching out to maybe five past clients a day, right? Just make it that simple. Like, Hey, every day, Monday through Friday, I'm going to send out five, you know, five text messages and five phone calls to, to uh, my database, right? Just something that's really simple. Um, and that's something that I, I, you know, Enrique and I, we definitely get a lot of referrals. And that's something that I tend to do quite often is I just get my list and I'm just sending a text message. Hey, just checking in on you. You know, let me know if you guys need anything. A lot of times we don't want to ask, you know, I'm not trying to ask for a referral. I'm just letting them know that, Hey, if you need anything, I'm here. Um, and just keep it, keep it really simple in that, in that regard. Yeah, definitely. Um, the other thing to add guys and something that we were doing before COVID and we're going to start up again is, um, is client appreciation events. Um, we, we had a big event that we would do every year called day at the park. You know, we had like almost 400 people at our, at our last one before COVID we ran out a whole park. We have live music. We have, you know, face painters, taco guy, all that. And we basically just invite all our past clients, all our close friends, all our close family, basically everyone who supports us. And it's something where people will look forward to that event every single year. We film it and all that stuff. And that was one of our staple events. And it's something we're going to, we're going to start up again now that California is reopening, but let's say, you know, even on a smaller scale, what I've seen other teams do is like, they could be like a dinner or a brunch for like your VIP clients, right? Maybe it's, it's your past clients and you invite them to, to a dinner or a brunch or something, right? Or you rent out a bar and you do happy hour for one hour, right? And you invite them and, and you build content around that. Um, just the fact that you invite people, that's going to keep you top of mind. They may not all show up, but they're going to know that you invited them. They're going to know that you thought of them. And when they know someone, they're going to end up calling you to, to send that client over to you. So I would brainstorm if, if, if that's what you like to do, if you like doing events, I love having events. So that's part of who I am. And, and I like to, you know, hang out and bring people together. So it's, it's something we incorporate into our business. And um, go ahead. Good, good stuff, guys. Good stuff. All right, guys. So we're coming up on time right now. It's uh, Dan, the time flies. Um, it's 11 o'clock right now. 
if there's any, if there's not any more questions right now, if anybody has a, like a last question or comment or feedback, um, we can go ahead and cover it. If not, we'll go ahead and wrap up and, and see you guys next week. Um, anybody have anything to share or uh, feedback or comment? Everything's good. good All stuff. good. So let's do this. I want to end this with another accountability challenge. Feel free to participate if you want. You don't have to. Um, but uh, I think it's, it's healthy if we hold ourselves accountable. Is there anything that you want to get accomplished from now till next Wednesday when we meet again? Um, something you got to knock off your list, something you've been putting in the back burner, or just a goal you want to you know, complete. Could be something big, something small. Uh, anything you want to throw out there so we can hold you accountable. Mine's going to be that uh, Eat, Pray, Hustle uh, journal. So I'm going to already have my, my wife. I just texted her to order it for me and my daughter. So it's going to be something I'm going to kind of, I'm going to, I will implement and I'll go ahead and kind of show you guys the pages on, on Wednesday of next week. I'll send Enrique the Amazon link. So it's make sure it's the right one, but yeah, that's, it's a really good journal. I, I, there's several journals out there. I usually just pick whichever one looks good on Amazon. Nice. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. There we go. So I'm going to write this down. Jason, eat, pray, hustle. And he's going to start, he's going to order it and start, start using it. Anybody else? I'm going to follow up with my database and add everybody onto HomeBot. And then of course, keep working out and keep waking up early. So you're going to add your database to HomeBot and then stay with the, uh, the morning routine working up and uh, waking up and working out. Okay. All right. Good stuff, man. Uh, anybody else? Yeah. I'm going to challenge myself for a new listing by next week. So there we go. New listing by next week. Let's get it. Uh, I'll go in. I'll chime in. Um, I just got my gym membership. <laughs> I've been, constantly you know up and down about going so i want to go five days a week uh and i have all this content i've collected um from real estate videos and i just want to put two videos up i just haven't had the time to do it um so that's really big for me okay so mitch is from now till next week hit the gym five times is that is that right yeah uh five gym sessions and then put out two videos yes all right easy peasy bro yeah. Um, anybody else? Hervin, Tanya, you guys want to participate? Yeah, I'll do. Uh, I'll do two videos. I will do it, and uh, I want to follow up with all of my past clients. Okay. Yeah, it's something I haven't done. So two videos, and follow up with past clients. A little check in. There we go. Um, okay. For me, I want to, um, yeah, I want to get that journal as well. So add um, the journal to my routine. I'm going to order the journal um, depending on how fast it gets here. But if not, I'm just going to add five minutes of journaling um, to my daily routine. Uh, so just five minutes of writing stuff down. And in addition, I need to put out another video. I'm actually going to make a video just um, that I'm gonna send to my agent database just about a clarity break. So clarity break video, what the video is and why it's important, what, what a clarity break is and why it's important. Uh, and some of you guys are on my email list, so you'll see that video. Anybody else? All right, guys, um, this is session seven, Real Estate Growth Academy wrapped up. I appreciate, appreciate your guys' time. Remember anything that you took from today, Find those one or two little nuggets that you can go back and apply towards your business and let's take some action. Let's make it happen. Let's not let this be one of those things that you attend and you just listen and then you don't go do anything. Like that's not what we're all about. It could just be that one little thing that you take back and, and you put into your business and you make some tweaks so that you can grow. Um, and also guys, it's all about paying it forward. If there's anybody out there that you know, that you see struggling, that you see needs help, and there's helpful information that you have that you've learned here, just pass it on, pay it forward, help people out. Um, there's a lot of people out there who are lost, right? There's, there's a lot of people having success and there's a lot of people who are struggling, who don't have a clue on what to do to, to get their business moving forward. So 
just remember that your experiences and your success, um, you have the power to impact other people. And, um, you know, it's all about paying it forward. So I appreciate you guys' time. We'll be back here next Wednesday, same time, same place. Feel free to uh, share this with people, invite people. We want to get this group uh, growing every single week. So I appreciate you guys. Have a great week. All right.